Our scripture lesson this morning comes from uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 10 uh, to 12, and um, chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. <clears throat> then David lay down with his ancestors and was buried in David's city. He ruled over Israel 40 years, 7 in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. Now Solomon loved to walk in the laws of his father David with the exception that he also sacrificed and burned incense at the shrines. The king went to the great shrine at Gibeon in order to sacrifice there. He used to offer a thousand entirely burned offerings on that altar. The Lord appeared to Solomon at Gibeon in a dream at night. God said, ask whatever you wish and I'll give it to you. Solomon responded, You showed so much kindness to your servant, my father David, when he walked before you in truth, righteousness, and with a heart true to you. You've kept this great loyalty and kindness for him and have now given him a son to sit on his throne. And now, Lord my God, you have made me your servant king in my father David's place. But I'm young and inexperienced. I know next to nothing. But I'm here, your servant, in the middle of the people you have chosen, a large population that can't be numbered or counted due to its vast size. Please give your servant a discerning mind in order to govern your people and to distinguish good from evil. Because no one is able to govern this important people of yours without your help. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had made this request. God said to him, because you have asked for this instead of requesting long life or wealth or victory over your enemies, asking for discernment so as to acquire good judgment, I will now do just what you said. Look, I hereby give you a wise and understanding mind. There has been no one like you before now, nor will there be anyone like you afterward. I now also give you what you didn't ask for, wealth and fame. There won't be a king like you as long as you live. And if you walk in my ways and obey my laws and my commands, just as your father David did, then I will give you a very long life. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. God. So we've been talking about David for for a good little while now down here. Uh, Just kind of going through some of these passages that the lectionary lifts up to us from David's life, and this is, this is the last one. Um, we hear uh, in chapter 2 about David's death, that David has died, and his son Solomon has taken his place as king in Israel. And God comes to Solomon and says, in a dream, and says, ask for whatever you want. Ask for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. We ask God for all sorts of things, you and I. We ask God for health, for wealth, for success. We petition God about our children, our grandchildren, nephews, nieces. I would suspect we offer those kinds of prayers and ask God for things on their behalf quite a bit. And we may not do this kind of asking God for stuff in our formal prayers, you know, uh, when you take time to pray with the whole dear God formula, but uh, in our informal prayers, in our informal prayers, we surely ask God for all these kinds of things. You know what I mean by informal prayers? For me, it's kind of like, you know, riding along in the car by myself, um, it's quiet, uh, and all of a sudden I start worrying, and all of a sudden I'm asking God for a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff, um, you know, that I'm worrying about. Health, wealth, success, children, parents, whatever, family. And our informal prayers, it may not be the car for you, maybe somewhere else, but our informal prayers. We end up asking God for all sorts of things just in the things that we spend our time worrying about and our money on. In short, we ask God for things that would make our lives easier or better. We 
We ask God for things that would make our lives easier or better. Have you ever wondered, maybe you haven't, but we're going to wonder today together. Have you ever wondered, what could I ask God for that would please God? What could I ask God for that would please God? See, I wholeheartedly believe that God is listening when we pray, whether formally or informally. God is listening when we pray. I believe that God hears our prayers. God knows the things we're worried about. God knows the things we spend money on. Our time on. And sometimes we get the answer that we want. Sometimes we don't. Turns out we aren't all promised what Solomon is. That ask for whatever you want and I'll give it to you. We don't all get that promise. But God is listening to our prayers. So what would it look like to ask for something that would actually please God? It's exactly what Solomon does in this passage we just read. He says, God, I know the task that you've set before me, and it is more than I can do without you. So if you will help me to govern this people, to know right from wrong, to have wisdom and a discerning mind, that would be great. That's what Solomon asks for. And God grants his request. And the text tells us that God is pleased by the request itself. Now, not all of us govern people, uh, so we probably shouldn't all just copy Solomon's prayer. But we can examine our own lives and figure out what it is that God has called us to do in the mission of his church. What is it that God has called you to do in the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ? What is it that God has called you to do to be a part of the mission and ministry of making disciples for the transformation of the world? What is it that God has called us to do? And then we can ask that God give us the tools, the talents, and the abilities we need to do well what God has called us to do. That's what Solomon does. God has called Solomon among all of David's other sons. God has called Solomon to be king that replaces David. God has called Solomon to replace the greatest king that ever will be in the history of Israel. And what Solomon asks for is not for wealth or fame. It's not for anything that helps him personally. He asks, give me the tools I need to serve your people better. Give me the tools that I need to serve well in the task that you have given me to do in your kingdom. For us, that means that if you're called to evangelism, to share your faith with those that you meet, you could ask God for the wisdom to know how to share your faith with others in a way that doesn't conform to that pushy Christian stereotype that exists out there that doesn't work for actually sharing your faith with others. For the wisdom to be able to actually see the person and their needs, to see their woundedness and their brokenness, to see the ways that they need to know the grace and peace and the love of God in their life. And to share faith from that. And if you're called to feed the hungry, you could ask God for the patience, compassion, and endurance it takes to continue in that ministry day after day after day. If you're called to teach others about the faith and to help them in their discipleship formation, you could ask for the strength and the vulnerability it takes to truly enter into relationships with others for the purpose of building them up in the body of Christ. The difference between asking for those things from God, those kinds of things, those things that build up the body of Christ, those things that are for serving others in the kingdom, the difference between that and then asking for the kinds of things we normally worry about is that the things that please God really aren't about us. They're about serving others better in the mission of the church. It's not about making your or my life easier or better. The things that please God are about making somebody else's life better.
about serving others in the mission of the church. And by serving others, I want to be clear that I don't just mean serving your own family and friends. That is important work. It is important work to serve your family and your friends, but it can't be the only work you do as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because it still serves your own interest. It's still about making your life better or easier. That's not discipleship. We have to serve others, our neighbors, our community, the least, the last, and the lost that are right next door. The passage goes on to tell us that God is so pleased by Solomon's request that he gives him what he didn't ask for. Wealth and fame, and if he follows in, his, in God's commandments, long life. But that can be a trap for us as Christians, and has been a trap for Christians throughout the many years, uh, at least past few hundred. It's a trap for us because we try and play the game with God, right? We say, I'm going to ask for this, this thing that's about serving others, because I hope it will make you happy and you will give me what I really want. I'm going to ask for this thing that builds up the body of Christ, this thing that I think you want to hear so that you'll give me what I really want, wealth and fame, good family life. Whatever. But it's a trap. Because do we really think that God doesn't know what, that that's what we're doing? That we're just trying to play God? Play a game with God? The point of our, all this is not to figure out how to work the system of prayer, of asking God for things. That's not the point. The point is to have a heart that is oriented towards serving others in the mission and ministry of the church first. And not to have a heart that is only oriented towards your self-interest. When we have a heart that is oriented towards serving others in the mission and ministry of the church first, that is what pleases God. And then when we petition God, when we ask God for those things that build up the body of Christ, that give us the tools to be able to be better disciples, that's what pleases God. That's what it means to ask God for something that actually pleases God. And that's how we fulfill the ministry and mission to which we have been called as disciples. By having hearts that are constantly oriented towards serving others in the ministry and mission of the kingdom of God. By constantly examining our own hearts, our own minds, our own souls to know what is it that I'm asking for and why? Is it out of my own self-interest? Is it out of this own desire to make my life easier or better? Or is it out of a desire to make somebody else's life better? Is it out of a desire to serve others in the ministry and mission of the church in the calling to which God has called me to use the gifts and talents that God has given me to be a part of God's mission and ministry of making disciples for the transformation of the world, of sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with all that we meet. Why am I asking? And is my motivation worthy of the grace which God has shared with me? Or does it fall short? We just blessed our children's book bags to send them back to school. In a lot of ways, the new school year is uh, our new year, right? Um, For us, the way uh, things move, whether you've got kids or not, seems like things restart when the fall starts to get here, whether it's football season or whatever. Um, There's a marker there, and things ratchet back up. We have opportunities at work, in life, being back in our community after vacation, after time away, after rest. We have opportunities to come back into this community, 
to make a difference for the kingdom of God, to be a part of God's mission and ministry here in Rock Hill, to share the good news of the grace of Jesus Christ with all that we meet. But if we're going to do that, we have to seriously ask, ask ourselves, what are we asking God for? What are we worrying about? What are we spending our time and our money on? And once we've answered those questions, then we need to ask, what are we going to ask for from now on? How are we going to let God change our hearts and our minds, change our lives, so that we ask for the things that are pleasing to God? What are we going to ask for? As this new school year begins, as this fall meets us, as we have opportunities, as we have the chance to connect with our neighbors, with our community, with people we haven't met yet, to share the good news, the grace of Jesus Christ. What will you ask for? Would you pray with me? Heavenly and Almighty God, you give us opportunities every day to be in ministry and mission with you. To be a part of the spreading of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be a part of offering grace and love and mercy in your name to people who need it. To people who feel lost and lonely, broken to people who feel wounded and hurt, to people who don't know that there is hope in you. All we have to do is learn to ask for the right things, to ask for eyes that can see and ears that can hear and hearts that are open to your guidance, to ask for the tools, to ask for the wisdom and the insight to see and to be the disciples that you have called us to be. Reveal your Holy Spirit to us that we would take this day as a fresh start in you. That we would take this day as an opportunity to recommit ourselves to your mission and ministry to be a part of the building up of the kingdom of God. We ask these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.